Hello, science and cooking. This is Pia. So in lecture this week, we talked about the Maillard reaction. And we learned that this is a set of reactions that happen in cooking when we do things like saute onions or bake cookies or bake breads or fry up a steak. And we talked about what was underlying this reaction. And we... Um, talked about how it's a reaction between uh, a carbohydrate or a sugar and an amino acid. And on this picture, we show glucose and asparagine, which is an amino acid. And we briefly touched upon how the Maillard reaction um, starts out with a reaction between this group on the amino acid and this group here on the sugar. And we then talked about how this forms a bond, and then this leads to all kinds of chemical reactions and all kinds of products, and this is one of them. And then we did an experiment. We fried onions um, with and without baking soda, and we saw which onions browned faster. And in lecture, this actually was not uh, obvious, but we learned elsewhere that the addition of baking soda was supposed to speed up the browning of the onion. And so then the question we asked was, why does this happen? What is it about baking soda that makes the Maillard reaction happen faster? So in order to understand this, let's first look at glucose. And in solution, glucose exists at an equilibrium between a ring structure and a chain structure. And so the difference between these two structures is essentially that this bond here is broken. And so when this bond is broken, we instead have this chain structure. And so in solution, we're going to have some of this structure around. So now let's look at this in the presence of an amino acid, in this case, asparagine. And so this is the backbone of the amino acid, and this is the side group, although for our purposes that's not really important. Uh, what is important is that this is a nucleophile, so it has two extra electrons, which makes it a good nucleophile. And what's going on up here is that the oxygen is electronegative. So this is the sign we usually use for that, electronegative. And so it is withdrawing electrons away from the carbon, which in turn makes the carbon electropositive, like that. And since this is electronegative and this is electropositive, this is going to be a perfect reaction where this can attack here and attach. And so this is the first step of the Maillard reaction. And it's actually the bottleneck step. It is the step that is sort of slowing down the other processes. It's the step that takes the longest to form. And so now let's look at what happens when we add baking soda. Um, and baking soda, we learned, is a base. And we also learned what the chemical formula for baking soda is. We learned that it is NaHCO3. And since this is an ion, or, or it's two ions, this is what it would translate to if we wrote out the ions. It would be like this. HCO3 minus. And so this is the, the basic part of baking soda. You can see that because of this negative sign, that it will gladly react with anything that is positive or any H plus that is around. Or another way to look at this is that it's a base, and so when it is dissolved in water, it forms OH minus and the OH- minus is going to react with the H pluses. And so if you then look at these molecules and you look at where might this molecule pick up 
an extra hydrogen. And it turns out it will probably most likely pick up the hydrogen that is attached to this amino group. And what will happen then if this picks up a hydrogen is we will, instead of this, we will have this. We'll have our two electrons, and then we'll also have a negative charge now, because this was neutral. And so you can imagine that now this is really negative, and it will, in fact, so much more happily attack the carbon here and form a bond. And so this is actually the reason that baking soda speeds up the reaction. And in fact, any base could do this. So for example, when you bake pretzels, you first brush them with a dilute solution of sodium hydroxide, and this is what gives them that very brown exterior. And here is a conclusion is actually from the Kaimas blog. Um, someone actually tried this that we tried to do in lecture in a much more organized way. They used baking soda up here for this, this batch, and they had no baking soda for this batch. And then you can see how the browning happens faster with baking soda than without. Okay, everybody, thank you. Ask me questions if you wonder about anything. Okay.